The Millionaire Real Estate Investor by Gary Keller is easily on my top 10 list of the best real estate investing books of all time. It's packed with tips and case studies of real investors and how they accumulated a million dollars using real estate. In this video, I'm gonna narrow it down to my favorite five ideas that are the most practical and the most useful for you, and we're getting started right now. Welcome to Coach Carson TV. My name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach, and this is a channel all about investing in real estate, achieving financial independence, and doing more of what matters. The primary author of this book is Gary Keller, who you might recognize from the ultra-popular real estate agent firm Keller Williams Realty. He was the founder. And what I love about what he and the other authors did with this book was they didn't just base it on theory. They interviewed hundreds of actual millionaires who had used real estate investing, and they took the common threads from all those different stories and all those different tips, and they organized them into the book. I have tons of notes in here, tons of underlining, tons of highlighting, but what I wanted to do in this video is go behind the camera and show you by writing down the five best ideas that I think are really helpful and explain those, those ideas. And if you like them, I definitely recommend you get the book. I've got a link below in the video description. It's one of those you wanna have on your shelf. Let's get started. The first big idea, and really the main idea from the book, is something called success models. And what this means is that Gary recommends that you study success, study successful people. So if you wanna become a millionaire real estate investor, if you wanna build wealth with real estate, no matter where you're starting, the answer is you need to study how people who have already done it before you, how they did that. You might've heard this before, but success leaves clues. That doesn't mean that you can ever find an exact path. Nobody's gonna be able to tell you this is what you should do, A, B, C, D, E, but there are clues. There are what, what Gary calls models. These are basically the methods and the ways that somebody does something. So instead of just focusing on, oh, that person accumulated a million dollars, let me actually look at the process. What are the steps that that person took? And if you put all those together, all those steps and processes, you could call that a model. That's a way of doing thing, a process, a method. And what, what the authors in the book said is that you can do things solo. Like you can try to figure things out through personal experience. You know, you step forward, you bump into a wall, you change directions, you know, you go another direction. It's very natural, whatever you're trying to do, including real estate investing, to have to go back and forth. It's kind of like a sailboat who tacks back and forth and back and forth. It's not a, never a straight line. And if you are doing it through personal experience, you can learn things on your own. You can watch it on the internet, right? But there's always a, a ceiling on your possibilities. There's only so much that you personally, without looking at examples of others, can really grow to. So this might be your ceiling as a real estate investor. But if you can use models, if you can start and learn from the mistakes that somebody else already made, and you can begin with some of the best practices that somebody else already uses and train yourself to do that, you can actually start way ahead of the game. So here you start here instead of at the, at the bottom. And yes, you're still gonna have some mistakes. You're still gonna have to learn. It doesn't apply exactly to you. You're gonna have to learn how to apply this for yourself, but you can elevate that ceiling. This is, this is how you get better as a real estate investor. This is how you accumulate more money. Really, this is how you get good at anything. I played football in college. I played a lot of sports. This is why you have a coach. This is why you have models. This is why you study other people. And the same thing works for real estate investing. And that's really what this book is. That's why I say it's the main idea. It's basically a book of models. They interviewed hundreds of real estate investors. They tried to boil them their ideas down into these models. And then they translate them. They, they draw pictures of them. They give you step-by-step -step checklist on how do you implement the models. So that's what my other four ideas are gonna be, or some of the best ideas from those models in the book. One of the most important models that Gary Keller and the other authors give you in the book is called tracking your net worth. They also call that the net worth model. And it's really a habit, it's a personal habit, and it has to do with something called a balance sheet or figuring out your net worth. So let me explain this to you, you've never seen this before. This little chart here is a picture of a financial chart that you'll see in businesses, you'll see in personal finances, and on one side, the green side here, are your assets. So think about that like money in the bank, stocks, if you own stocks, real estate, whatever your assets are, those things, that they have value, they're, they're, they're the things you invest in. On the other side though, balancing that out are liabilities. So you could also think about this is where your debt. So if you owe a mortgage on a house, you have a debt, that's a liability. And so you have to also list your liabilities, but then the difference, so basically a math equation, when you subtract your assets, you subtract the liabilities or your debt from your assets, the difference is your equity, what's also known as your net worth. So the, the tip here, the model is, 
to consistently track your net worth. And Gary Keller, the author said he, tra he, his mentor, when he first started investing and learning to build wealth, he would meet with him every week and he would require him to bring a copy of a balance sheet where he listed all of his assets, he listed all of his liabilities so that he could track whether his net worth was growing or not. And so by tracking it, and you probably know this, by tracking something, you pay attention to it, you tend to think about it all the time and you think about how can I get better? How can I grow this? How can I buy more assets? How can I decrease my liabilities in order to increase my net worth? That is what a balance sheet tells you. It's a really simple way to always be aware of how to measure the big picture goal, which is increased net worth. Now, why is that the goal? You can sort of think about it like the story of the golden goose and the, the eggs. There was a farmer who one day realized he had a golden goose and every day the golden goose would lay these golden eggs, which are really valuable. And eventually that gold, the farmer got greedy and he thought, I'm gonna get more of the eggs. I'm gonna kill the goose and take all the eggs out of the goose. And he ruined his entire operation because he killed the thing that was producing all the golden eggs. And so you can think about your net worth or your equity as the golden goose. So these assets, this, this equity you have, and the difference between that and the liabilities, you can get the golden eggs, which are cash flow, or any other money that you need to do what matters in your life. So that's, that's the reason you actually try to build wealth is you can use that money to do whatever you want. So whether that's uh, buying your own home, doing luxury items, traveling the world, making a difference in the world, that's why you track this, because this is the kind of core way of measuring how you're building wealth. And so it seems kind of simple, but if you can pay attention to this, you can make this a habit, both whether you invest in real estate or not, this is a super important way to think about uh, a model and something you can implement, implement for yourself. The third big idea that was one of my favorites from the book is called two real estate wealth building engines. They call this the financial model. So this is essentially how do you build wealth? Like how do you become a millionaire in real estate? This is the core. This is the simple plan, the model to do that. And if you break down all the fancy, complicated analysis of real estate, it really comes down to two different ways that you can build wealth. Number one is that you use equity buildup. So building equity, remember the last big idea that equity is the difference between what you owe on a property, the debt, and what you actually own, the, the value of that property. So building up your equity, that's one way to build up, build wealth, and I'll tell you a couple ways to do that. And number two, growing your cash flow. So cash flow, equity, cash flow, equity. That's really the two main ways. There's some other benefits like tax benefits and some other things, but what they recognize here that if you want to recognize and find the best deals that will actually build wealth for you, you want to pay attention to these two things and always ask yourself, is this real estate investment doing one of these two things or maybe both of them for me? And so how do you build up equity? The first way you do it is by paying down your debt. So if, you, if you've ever looked at a loan that you buy to, to buy a property, you'll notice that it's like a 30 year loan or a 20 year loan, if you ever heard those terms. That means every time you make a mortgage payment, a little bit of that mortgage payment gets paid down. So it's like you're putting money in a savings account, essentially, that you might have a $500 payment or a $1,000 payment, but each, each payment you make, $100 or $200 is going towards what's called the principal of the loan. You're reducing the amount of money you owe. So that debt pay down is one way to build up equity because every month you're getting a little bit wealthier. You're building another $200 in net worth just by paying that down. And if you have a rental property, your tenant is actually paying you rent and you're using that rent to pay down the mortgage. So your tenant is actually building wealth for you and paying down your debt. That's a really cool way to build wealth. The other way you can build equity is by the price of the property going up or the price of your asset. So remember, you even if you owed the same amount, if the price goes up, your equity is going to increase as well. So there's two different levers there, price or the value of your asset and then the amount of money you owe. And so you can strategically and deliberately pay down your debt and try to buy properties that are going to tend to grow. Either you can do that more, more actively, like you could choose to buy properties that are fixer uppers or that you buy below value. So if you buy a property worth 200 and you buy it for 180,000 because you found a good deal on it, that's $20,000 that you was called a forced appreciation. So you, you forced it by buying it up front. You, you bought $20,000 in appreciation just day one. So that, that doesn't land in your lap all the time. You got to look for those kind of deals. That's part of what I talk about on this channel. How do you do that? How do you find good investments? But that's, that's what a lot of investors do. 
but then there's, there's also the buy and hold. So just holding it over the long run, you'll also, if you're in a good location and you analyze your location well, and there's growth and there's new jobs and there's there's new people moving into an area, it tends to appreciate. Good, good properties tend to appreciate. On average, some of my properties have gone up about 3% per year over the last 18 years that I've been investing. There's no guarantee of that, right? But generally good locations tend to appreciate some more than others, but it's also possible in some locations that people move out of the city, it could go down. But that is the way you build up equity, either through paying down your debt or finding properties that go up in value. But the second way you make money is cash flow. And sometimes these are, these are related, but if you want to make more cash flow, you need to have your rent appreciate. So just like the price can appreciate, um, the rent is, is often goes hand in hand with that. Sometimes the price appreciates more than the rent. That's why you have places like California and New York where the prices have gone way up and the rents aren't quite keeping up with that. So if you're a landlord, it's harder to buy properties that make sense in those locations, but rents do go up. So my properties have tended to go up about two or 3% in rent per year. So you can increase your cash flow that way. You can also increase your cash flow by eventually paying your loan off. And I have another video that I'll put in the link below where I talk about how do you pay off rental properties sooner. Instead of waiting 30 years, you can accumulate a few properties and use the cash flow to pay them off sooner using what's called a debt snowball. So those are ways you can increase your cash flow. There's other ways to increase your equity. Those are your two main engines for building wealth. And the book talks a lot about different strategies to do that. The fourth model from the book is something called Criteria, Terms, and Network. CTN for short, and the authors call this the dynamic trio of real estate investing. So what this model does is it really answers the question, you know, in the last one we talked about, here are the two engines that help you build wealth. This gets even more specific, like what are the, what on a day-to-day -day basis, what will you be doing? What will you be looking for as a real estate investor? If you wanna become a millionaire, you're just getting started or you're growing your wealth, you're gonna be looking for three things. You're gonna be looking for good criteria. So the criteria mean what you'll buy. So this is the locations you're gonna buy, the property types, are you buying houses, duplexes, quadruplexes, apartment buildings, mobile homes. You can make money with all sorts of different types, but in your area, you're gonna to have to study those, which types, which locations are best, and which features. Like, so not all houses are the same. Like there's certain features, there's certain sizes of the house, there's certain backyards, there's certain uh, types of amenities in, a, in neighborhoods. So there's a lot to, to study there, but if you can get clear on your criteria, the more clear you are on what you want to buy, the more it tends to start showing itself. It's like when you buy a new car or something, or you get some new clothes, you start recognizing that other people are wearing that same thing or driving that same car. It's very much like that. The clearer you get on what you want, the criteria, the more you'll easy, you'll be able to find it. But it, that's not enough. You can't just buy the right location of the house. You also need to buy it on the right terms. And so this means how you're going to buy it. And it basically comes down to price and financing, price and financing. So you, when you run the numbers on real estate, which this book has a lot about, and I have a lot about that on my channel as well, you're basically trying to figure out what price should I pay? Like what is a good price? What's it mean to have a good deal? So that's a big part of this, understanding having a formula or two or more, or a spreadsheet that you use to tell you, these are good terms for my deal. This is a good price. But price is only one piece of that, the financing is also a piece. So you, you know, most of us don't just go pay cash for the property. We, and so you can, of course, if you're buying, if you have enough cash and you have buying a low enough price, but usually we use debt or some kind of financing. And so the price and the financing go hand in hand, the cost of that financing, the terms, all the little paperwork and the little, uh, the little small print of your financing, all of that matters. And so those are the two things you want to figure out. How do you run the numbers? What kind of financing do I want? And if you don't get the terms you want, you go to the next deal you're patient, you're, you pass. The third thing is your network. So CTN, the network is who will help you find the right property on the right terms. This is your team. And you, you might know this, but real estate's a team sport. I love the quote from John Wooden, who is a famous coach at UCLA, a basketball coach. And he wrote an awesome little book called Wooden. And one of the ideas in that book is the number one ingredient of being a star, a star sports player, a star real estate investor, anything is a team around you. And most games are team sports. Real estate is certainly a team sport. If you want to be the star, if you want to be a millionaire, you got to build a good team around you. So this is a model, and there's a lot of ideas in the book about that, but just keep this framework. This is how you're going to accomplish building wealth. You're going to look for criteria, terms, and a network. Now let's go to the fifth idea, and we'll wrap it up. This final big idea is to be a shopper and not a buyer. This is especially important 
in 2021 when I'm recording this, it's a hot market, there's a lot of competition, it's hard to get deals sometimes, and I hear from a lot of people, hey, I can't find any good properties, what's going on here? And so the message of this book is a timeless message, is that you're always looking for properties. You never stop looking. As an investor, you're always looking for good deals. That means you're a shopper. But that doesn't mean you'll buy any deal just because other people are paying that. You don't follow the herd mentality. And the reason why is investing cyclical. Real estate and all other assets go up and they go down. They go up and they go down. There's a lot of reasons for those cycles. It's interesting to study why that is, but the fact is that they do go up and down. And so what you have to do, you have to be very disciplined as an investor. You have to filter every single deal you look at. You have to be patient and you can't compromise. Remember your criteria and your terms, what you're looking for and how you're willing to buy it. You decide that ahead of time, you put it in writing, you say, this is what a good deal means to me. You follow a model that's proven and it makes sense. And then you're always willing to walk away if it doesn't meet your criteria and your terms. Does that mean that you're gonna to have to look at a lot of properties? You're gonna have to shop for a lot of properties. And so, but yes, it is. You're gonna miss out on a lot of properties. But by walking away, you're maintaining your discipline. You are actually being a good investment investor sometimes when you don't buy a property because you're maintaining your discipline. And the message I would say, and this has been frustrating for me as well in the past, especially when I was a new investor, is there's always another deal. There's always another one. There's millions of houses there's millions of properties and if you don't get this first one there's always another one you have to be willing to keep shopping and keep shopping that doesn't mean you have to be so conservative that you never buy a deal maybe your criteria are really really stringent and they're unrealistic you'll never buy one even in a down market and so you do need to test that against reality but as long as you're protecting your biggest risk your downside at some point you have to do a deal you have to get into it but you don't want to compromise what your bottom line criteria and terms are so that's what they mean by be a shopper not a buyer it's a mentality it's a practice it takes practice it takes some patience but it's an important part of being and becoming a millionaire real estate investor have you read The Millionaire Real Estate Investor yet? What did you think about it? Are there any ideas that you think were great from the book that you'd like to share? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you like this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell. I have new videos that come out every Friday morning. And if you like this book review, I think you'll like another book review I have. I have a link in the video description below. And also you can see at the end of the video right above me here, this book is called Building Wealth One House at a Time. It's another one on my top 10 list by John Schaub. And I think you'll like the big ideas from this one if you liked The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. Thanks so much for watching Coach Carson TV. My name is Chad Carson. You can call me Coach. And this is a channel all about investing in real estate, achieving financial independence, and doing more of what matters. See you next time.